Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Ajit Babu and I'm an internist who spends some of my time in the United States and most of my time in India and over the years I've gotten involved in the 86 initiative and some important public health work in India and it's a pleasure for me to present the work of our group to you. The 86 follow-up initiative has embarked on a project called EWAS which is an acronym for the Early Warning and Adaptive Response System. And in the next few minutes, I'd like to share with you what we've done with it and where we hope to go from here. First off, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you my good friend and valued colleague, Professor Biju Soman. He's an Associate Professor of Public Health at the Achyudha Menon Center for Health Science Studies. And he's on the steering committee of the 86 follow-up initiative representing India. He has further qualifications in infectious disease epidemiology and a great deal of interest in technology applications for enhancing public health. And uh, Professor Biju will be logging into the meeting and participating in the discussion. At this moment in time, I hope to do the same but since this recording is being made a few days in advance of the meeting and I have some other conflicting engagements where I have to travel away from my home, I'm not completely sure that I'll be able to join in as well, but I do hope to have that opportunity. In terms of some background of what this project is about and how we got to where we are, initially I was fortunate enough to be nominated to go to Bangkok and be a part of the 86 or Action Team 6 meeting in 2007 and I was the official delegate from India. During that meeting I happened to be sitting literally next to Professor Niehaus from Germany and he and I struck up a warm friendship which has survived for many years hence. During that meeting we decided that we would try to explore the use of geomatics along with the fuzzy logic modeling that Professor Niehaus is an expert at, to develop a spatial decision support system that could improve public health. The direction we decided to take in terms of something specific to do was to try and perform a pilot project in my state of Kerala in India. In Kerala, mosquito-borne infections have been a great problem for many years particularly dengue, transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. At this particular time in 2007, when we were in Bangkok, a chikungunya epidemic was to the forefront in Kerala, and there was enormous concern about its impact and its public health ramifications. And this particular infection was also transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. We felt, therefore, that if we focused on something that was topical and important to the public at large, we might have a better chance of successfully implementing something that might turn out to be rather revolutionary in terms of the way public health has typically been approached in India. Over time, we developed a strong collaboration with the Achyudha Menon Center, and that's where Professor Biju is from. And we all worked together with the idea of developing a spatial decision support system, which would be called EWAS, and it would provide a dynamic risk mapping for early warning of potential epidemics or health problems, followed by an adaptive suggestion of the appropriate response. And by that, what I mean is that looking at the risks involved and also the resources that are available with the system to deal with those risks, the system would learn from that relationship and suggest the most optimal responses or activities or interventions that could be employed that could favorably reduce the risk and hopefully eliminate the chance of an epidemic. In terms of the current status of the project, the modeling work and interface design is going on, led by Professor Niehaus and his team in Germany. And I had the occasion to meet with uh, two of the senior health officials of Kerala State dealing with uh, the vector bone program and tuberculosis respectively 
in August of 2013. And we had a very frank and detailed discussion that extended for about two hours. The outcome was that the vector bone program shared with me their significant constraints in adapting something like this at this particular point in time, in large measure due to the uncertainty about the quality of the data and even the availability of certain key data that would be essential for making something like EWAS useful and usable in a daily sense. At the same time, there concurrently developed a great interest from the tuberculosis program in the use of some of these technologies for enhancing the delivery of care and even diagnosis in tuberculosis. And as such, they voiced their willingness to be associated with the EWAS project. We had a discussion about this within the group and it was decided that we would formally initiate an additional track in tuberculosis in the EWAS project. Tuberculosis is a chronic disease which is caused by a bacteria named Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It predominantly causes lung infections, but it can also affect other parts of the body. TB is transmitted by droplets, which may be created after an infected patient coughs. These droplets might then be inhaled by another person who is in the near vicinity and then subsequently that person might get infected as well. It's a major cause of global morbidity and mortality and unfortunately India has the largest incidence of new cases in the world meaning that approximately one in four cases that are newly diagnosed around the world is in India. It was estimated by the government that there were about 2.3 million new cases in 2011. So what might be some of the reasons why there is so much TB in India? Well, the risks are believed to include co-infection with HIV, which is also a problem in India. The impact of systemic disorders like diabetes, which might weaken the immune system and uh, India has a very high rate of diabetes, uh, among the highest in the world as well. And the influence of problems like malignancy, which also affects immunity. There is also the impact of lifestyle factors like smoking, low education levels, and a lack of preventive health adoption, wherein people wait till they are really sick before they seek medical attention. And this then leads to a situation where the problems have already started and indeed flourished before medical attention is brought to bear on the situation. There is also a significant role for socioeconomic factors like overcrowding, migration and malnutrition which are prevalent across the country and this may facilitate the development of TB in a susceptible host. Finally, there are environmental factors such as pollution and poor air circulation, which again might enable the TB bacillus to remain active in situations such that it is transmitted to others. In addition to the risk for tuberculosis in general, there is also another point to consider, which is the risk for more resistant forms of tuberculosis, such as multi-drug resistant TB or MDR-TB, extended drug resistant TB or XDR, and even a few cases of completely untreatable tuberculosis. Now the numbers, when looked at as a percentage of the total case burden in India, are rather low. But when you look at the absolute numbers, they are unacceptably high. And in situations where a patient gets a recurrence of TB, either from a prior TB infection that was incompletely treated or from a fresh exposure to tuberculosis, more than 1 in 10 of such cases come within the category of being multi-drug resistant. Now, why is this going on? Again, the reasons are speculative, but it is believed that one of the situations could be that 
there is a mismatch between the theory of the tuberculosis control program which is based on something called DOTS, directly observed treatment short course, and the practical reality in which this particular treatment program is being applied. There can also be problems with the regular supply of medications and even if supplied the patient has to take that medication on a regular basis for an extended period of time since the treatment regimens for TB might vary anywhere from 6 months to 12 months to 24 months or even longer depending on the situation. And also the patient population in India tends to seek care from the private sector and this has been estimated at being roughly two-thirds of the patient encounters in India are happening in a private sector system. And the private sector has enormous variability in its care for TB and they really don't have the same focus on public health that the government public health system does. This also may lead to situations where tuberculosis is either poorly diagnosed or inadequately treated, thereby leading to a persistent risk of fostering resistant tuberculosis. Now the resources that are available for the control of TB in India is centered around the RNTCP or the Revised National Tuberculosis Control Program. And this particular program has done well over the years in reining in the rising tide of tuberculosis. They have developed a network of sputum smear testing laboratories in the government sector, thousands of them, so that these centers are supposed to have a degree of standardization in how they approach the smear of a possible patient with tuberculosis, which are then reviewed under a microscope to determine if the mycobacterium tuberculosis is actually present. The providers of the DOTS treatment program are mostly in government clinics and hospitals, but there is now increasing participation from the private sector as well since the government has been working hard to recruit them into the system. Patients who develop complications of tuberculosis that may ultimately need inpatient care are admitted to either government or private hospitals. Now this depends on where the patient chooses to go for care. So the patients who are comfortable with the private sector will go there and then naturally end up being admitted to a private sector hospital. Those who go to the government system typically would get referred to an appropriate government hospital within the system. We then focus on the question of what kind of resource data is available which could be useful for GIS or remote sensing applications that are relevant to the control of tuberculosis. One of the challenges we face is that healthcare is often funded from the central government but most of the service delivery and the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure are under the realm of individual states within the country. And when you look at these states, there is enormous variability in available information relating to infrastructure. For example, my state of Kerala has mapped its government institutes all the way down to the primary health clinic level. So this is quite detailed. Unfortunately, this data, though it is in the possession of the government, is not freely available even for use by other parts of government, much less individual citizens or private sector entities, NGOs and so on. There are open source internet resources like divagis.org which have significant open source content that is relevant to developing GIS or remote sensing applications in tuberculosis but they are not necessarily health specific. So what are the future plans that we have? First and most importantly there is the possibility of a pilot intervention to be done as part of a community-based TB project in Mumbai, which is expected to commence around the end of 2013. Satellite technology will be useful in developing GIS maps using GPS technology. And we also expect to explore opportunities for innovative use of remote sensing data to characterize the available resources and their optimal allocation. In conclusion, 
The EWAS team has grown in strength, reach and expertise over time and the pilot project will yield valuable insights into the utility, accuracy, adaptability and scalability of the EWAS platform. The fact that we are now looking at tuberculosis does not mean that we have abandoned our interest in mosquito borne disorders. It is only that since there are greater opportunities at this particular point in time of moving forward in TB, we are choosing to do that with the hope that as things mature and we are able to show more and more real value to stakeholders from a system like this, we can revisit the question of using this to tackle mosquito borne disorders as well as other important public health issues that are facing India and other developing countries. Finally, I'll conclude by sharing the contact information for Dr. Biju Soman and myself. It's been a pleasure and I wish you all the very best, not only for a successful meeting, but for having the great opportunities that are required to successfully do these things in your own situations and in your own countries. Thanks again. Bye-bye.